Hello, and welcome to this week's edition of the Hockey House. You may know us on the popular hockey news website, thehockeyhouse.net. I'm Stephen Ellis. And I'm Brendan Sanders. Let's talk hockey. Now, today, Brendan, oh, yes. we actually have a pretty special guest with us. We are pleased to have Mississauga Chargers head coach Joe Washtrock on the show today. Hello, Joe. Hey, guys. Thanks very much for having me. Yeah, thank you for coming. Yeah, thanks for coming, Joe. No it's great. problem at all. So, kind of uh, explain your path to where you are today as a coach. Oh, wow. Okay. I started, um, I'm born and raised in Guelph, and I played up through there, and uh, my dad was affiliated with the Guelph Holiday Platers, which was affiliated to the Guelph Platers or the Guelph Storm at the time. So I started off, I was lucky. I played, I coached a little minor hockey with my brother-in-law, Steve, who's, who's from Oakville, and we started there. But I moved up pretty quickly. I think it was just who you know. Sometimes that's how it works. And I started off being an assistant coach there. Um, then I moved on, and I coached uh, at Humber College, uh, the OCAA. Got shared Fair, that. Yeah. yeah, the hockey team. I actually yeah. played for I the played, hockey team. I played... Uh, when I, I went to college at Humber from, oh, we're going back to the time, 88 to 90. So there was, it was a really good league, and Sharon and Georgia and that. And there's no league anymore, but it, which is disappointing. But back in 2010, I think, was the last time uh, we won the last championship, which was nice. So uh, during that time, I coached, and then uh, I was scouting. I was fortunate enough to get hired by the Masaga Ice Dogs. Don Cherry hired me. Just uh, had a friend that was a scout there, Larry Gibbons. And I was hired on in their first, uh, just in their first training camp there. And uh, uh, I was coaching at Humber. And... Uh, you know they needed a, an assistant coach, and Steve Cherry's Don's nephew was a coach, and I had a good, I had a, like a job that was on um, shift work, so I could move it around. So I ended up being the assistant coach for one year before the team was sold. So uh, then I was back at Humber, and then uh, minor hockey with the reps, and coached my son Austin, as you guys know, and then uh, you know he moved up, and then uh, I've known Tony Clark for a long time, and Mississauga was looking for a coach, and that's how it came about. So now you worked with the Chargers for a while. Yeah. What, what do you like about the OJHL? Well, I, I, I just think it's a great league. It's it's good for young players. I think that, uh, you know, with their situation, it's a league of choice, and it definitely is. There's no question about it. Uh, you know, we have players that play for us that, you know, have played NCAA. We have, uh, you know, a 99 Jamin Allison that signed this year with the uh, Oshawa Generals. Generals. Mm -hmm. Oshawa Generals, yeah. And, you know, unfortunately, which hurt us a little bit, but great for them. But Thomas Latavo and Daniel D'Souza signed uh, contracts with the um, Saga Steelheads, which we're affiliated from. So I just like the fact that you can come to your league and you're not, you, you know, once you go to the OHL and play, as you guys know, it's over with, right? And you can't yeah. play NCAA. So um, even though I'm a scout in the OHL, but I, I like the fact that you, it is a choice and uh, it's a great league. I think it's come far and there's, there's a lot of good hockey players, a lot of good coaches um, in our league for sure. So now your son Austin used to actually play for the Chargers. Yeah. And now he's moved around a bit. Yeah. So what's what's it like? What was it like coaching him? And then now what's it like coaching against him? That's a great question. Uh, get that asked a lot. Um, you know, I coached Ozzy since he was you know 11, 12 years old. Him and Stefan Lonzi started with me. Who we moved to Burlington. But uh, you know, it came a time after his couple of years. He had two really good years and. Uh, you know, I just thought at the time that, you know, maybe a good opportunity for him just to move away from me. Uh, you know, not that, you know, people come to me and said, oh, you know, you and your son don't get along. That's that's totally wasn't the truth. It was just a situation where I think for him to get prepared to go to college or play in the OHL because he was drafted, that it was maybe just time for him to experience something different. That's all it was. And, uh, you know, uh, we had a, an agreement, you know, Coburg asked if, if he was available and it happened. It didn't work out. He's had a bumpy couple years. There's no doubt about it. Uh, you know, I still think he's played pretty well. But, uh, you know, I really think it's good for him to mature as a person and that and that's you know my wife and I made a decision that you know it was good for him to get a you know kind of out of away from us a little bit and even though it's been bumpy a little bit uh, you know he's a great kid and you know we're really fortunate that he got his uh, you know his D3 package at, at Canton. So what's the so this year of course it's a tougher year for Mississauga. Yeah it sure has been. But what's it like going in the mindset next year that you have about nine 97s, eight yep. 96s, 98s like Rabo and yep. um, and Francesco Luca yep. that are all coming back next year. Yep. They all have chemistry plus yep. probably a couple 99s and maybe a 2000 yeah. or two. For sure. We What's will. the mindset going well, into Well, I, I think to start with, you know, it, it, you know, we went into the mindset this year, guys, that we were going to have a younger team. You know, we didn't have the maybe the skill. Like Oakville has a young – like Mike Tarantino and I are really good friends. I coached Mike when he was actually 12, and, <laughs> you know, I helped him with the, our Telus Cup team when we were with the reps. So Mike and I go back a long time, and, you know, I have a lot of respect for him. And I know the Blades and, you know, Steve with the Blades and that, and Brandon, you live in Oakville. Like, they have a lot of good younger guys. You know, we have some real good young guys too, maybe not the same quality, but uh, we do. So we made a decision this year at the start of the year with our ownership when Lloyd Stockley to have a younger team. Um, you know, I, I didn't think, I think things would be a little bit better. But We'll have to cut you off, unfortunately, yep. but you're going to go to break. Sure. When we come back, we're going to talk more of Joe, and uh, it's going to be interesting.
Welcome back to our discussion with Mississauga Chargers head coach Joe Washkrak. Recently, former NHLer Patrick O'Sullivan published his book, Breaking Away, in which he chronicles his junior hockey life with a verbally and physically abusive father. And Joe, you were a, a big part of his uh, time with um, Mississauga and the OHL. Yeah. Uh, what was it like getting to know him? Uh, well, Patty was, you know, Patty went through a lot, and you know, just I, I tell people that, you know, to be CHL Rookie of the Year or doing what he's doing uh, and putting up all those points under the stuff they went under is just really, really incredible. So I would, I would say that to start with. But, you know, as I said in, uh, you know, in the book, and you know, uh, going through it like like Patrick said when I first met him actually was a, seemed like a pretty good guy um, you know he's you know he, he was happy that Patrick was a first overall pick I remember he bought he bought you know Don some ties that were funny and that and then you know progressively got worse and I you know on the job that I was doing at the time I was a you know crisis intervention worker and uh, you know I noticed some different things and you know as I say in the book I probably should have done something I you know I wish I would have done something a little bit sooner but you know that the night in Ottawa that it came to a head was you know it was definitely a difficult time for Patty and his family and in our organization but you know uh, Don did a great job our, our GM who's a lawyer Trevor Whiffen and I was just you know I was just happy to help Patty I was you know I've, I've been schooled in that and I worked in that field so it just happened to to work out perfect for me and uh, you know, but it wasn't, it, you know, if you read the book and stuff, it's it's definitely a tough story. There's no question about it, guys. Do you still talk to him? Yeah, I do. Uh, you know, Patty and I, I talk to Pat quite often now, you know, um, as I said, uh, you know, with the book and that, I kind of got a call. I haven't talked to Pat maybe for a couple years after. I kind of lost track to him a little bit. Uh, he's living in Florida now, which is probably pretty nice. And, and Gary Joyce, which is a pretty reputable radio. I'm sure you guys have heard of him. He just called me out of the blue and said, hey, Patty's doing the book. And I'm like, oh, okay, and uh, he goes, can I ask you some questions? I said, well, just give me a couple of days to kind of get my thoughts together because they wanted to know exactly what happened because, you know, I was there. And uh, he called me back, and Patrick was on the other line, and we went through it, and then all of a sudden, like, you know, I thought it was going to have a couple scribbles in the book, but, you know, I until I read it, I didn't know there was really a full chapter mm -hmm. on our relationship, and, you know, it, it, I'm pretty honored to, to have something like that to be and be a part of that, guys, to be honest with you. Did you know that you meant so much to him? That's a great question. Not, not as, no, not as much at the time. Like I, you know, we helped him through some difficult times. As I said, I just happened to be at the right spot at the right time, and I think any anybody would have helped him with that. Um, but no, not no, not really. Like he didn't tell me that you know uh, that I was going to be that much part of it. I, you know, he, he came up to Toronto, and there was a um, you know book launching thing that my wife Lisa and I went to, and then uh, you know I just read the book. I actually read it in stages, so I didn't know, and then I'm like. Oh wow! You know when you see your name on a chapter, mm -hmm. and I'm thinking, okay, is this good or bad? And uh, you know, he, you know, it was pretty, pretty much dead on on what happened in that situation. Wow. Well, with the Bell Let's Talk being yeah. so recent, yeah. what um, it was, did he communicate a lot with with a lot of what he was going through, or was it more just kind of toughing it out, or kind of like not mentioning it, like? What kind of what was it like? Yeah, you're right, Brandon. He didn't he didn't really say too much. There was an incident one day, like when Patrick moved here, he actually moved in with his uncle. So you know, kind of his, his you know, his uncle was actually a pretty decent guy at the time, or at least we thought. I'm not sure what Patty would say, and I'm not going to talk to him. <laughs> talk about him, you know, talk for him. But Patty lived with his uncle, and um, you know, I think it was after a weekend. And Patrick didn't have too many bad games, guys. Like he was CHL Rookie of the Good Year. Player. Like he, he's a great player. And I just remembered, uh, you know, he coming in after, and he had a black eye one day. I'm like. You know, like, so I call, I like, Patty, what's going on here? He goes, you know, Joe, like, you know exactly what's going on. He just kind of turned around and left. So, you know, at that time, you know, do I wish I probably should have did more? Yeah, guys, I'm not going to lie to you. Yeah, but I knew kind of what happened. But, you know, at the time, you know, we're in the CHL. You know, he's a rookie. You know, I'm a rookie coach here. I'm like, you know, you know, if it would have come across in the job that I did 9 to 5 type of thing, I probably would have done something about it right away. But, you know, eventually, you know, um, you know, it came to the head, but no, he didn't. He didn't say much about it. He pretty much toughed it out, and uh, you know, but it did come to a head where he just he just had enough on that Friday night in Ottawa, and then uh, after that, you know, things got a little bit better for him. But you know, you you know, I'm not speaking out of turn here. He does take, you know, he went through a lot of therapy and stuff like that, and I believe he still does. And uh, you know, he's definitely a, a lot better person for it. And uh, you know, I would encourage anybody that's going through a tough time like that to to do something about it. There's no question about it. Yeah, it's it's unfortunate, but we've also seen a couple players recently that um, it's tough. Like uh, the grind to get to hockey and yeah. outside factors, it's, it yeah. could be tough. We've seen that for Ryan Pilot. Thank you very yeah. much, Joe, for coming on the show. It no was a problem. pleasure having Thanks you. Thanks a lot, guys. I appreciate the time. Yeah. When we come back, we're going to talk about the NHL All Star Game and uh, a bit about John Scott too.
Hello, and welcome back to the Hockey House. Now, Brennan, uh, you know, I guess I just didn't know that you were wearing a this on the whole time. I didn't either. Where is this coming from? But you know, I'm about to tell you where it's coming from. Okay. Okay. So I went back to the past in Norway, and then I found out that I'm actually here in Canada. And then I asked my dad, Dad, where did this come from? He said, I played on a AAA team in grade 10, my summer hockey team. It was the Huskies. I know you were thinking of the Young Nats, because I told you the Young Nats, but it's actually the Huskies in summer hockey. So that's where it came from. Edmonton Colors, right? Okay. That's different. There's no name or anything, but. Uh, no, that, summer hockey, it was. it's like a. In summer hockey in the 70s, it was kind of like, here you go, uh, have some equipment, and give us. A hundred bucks. These are totally different designs than what you'll see these days. Like, not, not the color, but the fact that these are just so, I don't know, they're thicker looking, and they're heavier. Yeah, they are. They actually, the arms they, look like they've been destroyed. They, well, I guess a lot of pucks but that, that The idea. skate looks like there. But. I think someone basically ran over my dad. Oh. Like, he was like, hey, you, yeah? Can I run over you? Go ahead. Boom. <laughs> okay, so, you know what? We've talked a little bit about the All-Star game so far. Oh, we yeah. mentioned John Scott. Scott John. The tournament has happened now. It was basically a four-team event. Uh, split between multiple games, yes. uh, three games. And um, you know what? A lot of people were saying, okay, John Scott shouldn't have been there, but he ends up winning the actual um, MVP. And people were saying, oh, you know, Gary Bettman should be upset about this. I just want to say a little bit, kind of a rant. Now, say it, you've done this just before. say it. Okay, so basically, um, the way I look at it is the NHL, it seems like they had a little bit of a, a plan when they wanted to have the Coyotes trade him to Montreal and for Jared Tenorti and one of the strangest looking trades we've That's ever That's like seen. basically saying, hey, we're going to trade John Scott for a first round pick. Yeah, so anyways, they say, okay, well, you know what? It looks a little bad at the NHL for that point. But then all of a sudden, oh, yeah, no, he's okay to play. The NHL was kind of quiet the whole time because it was mostly the media making all the noise. And that's, you know, it, it's to be expected. It was a strange thing to see a guy like John Scott actually in the All-Star game. But... Then it, all of a sudden, there's so much pressure, or not so much, there's so much attention on him. He's getting cheered for everything. He's getting standing ovations. And he ends up scoring two goals on plays that, come on, guys, wasn't exactly all-star quality. And then he ends up getting the player of the game, despite not really doing much in the final game itself. Do you think the NHL basically made this little fiasco on the fact that, oh, he may not play just for PR? I, with... Um you see, this is what I was thinking in the end. We've talked about like the Winter Classic, how it's become like a novelty over the years, but the first one, it was great. Everyone loved it, right? Uh, I don't know if this is going to become like a full-time well, thing. This all the three on three. I got big. I'm a huge fan of three on three hockey in general. Like I played it for a few years. It was fun to watch. But three on three right here. Exactly. Uh, we never played three on three together. We did not. But uh, ball hockey. Oh yeah, it was um, great times. But anyways, like it's. Um, Yesterday's All-Star game, actually, or sorry, this week's All-Star game, was actually a decent game. It was probably the best All-Star game I've ever seen. However, okay. we, it still felt like we were watching, like, GMHL, like, beer league hockey oh, almost at points. Those guys were so good. Yeah, except without all the hitting. Uh, like, we saw a couple hits. We saw uh, Stamkos get leveled. Um, Kane got hit by Scott. Yeah, and then they ended up fighting. Oh, yes. And um, overall, you know, it was a good game, but... I don't know, like it's, it still wasn't great. And maybe it's just because I watched too many hockey games in a year. But like I've watched this week, I saw Kuwait versus Quater and Ooh. the Emirates versus Oman. And like those aren't exactly high level hockey, Golf Cup hockey actually. Oh, nice. And um, like 17 nothing games, 15 nothing games. But I still found that to be a little more interesting than the All Star game of points. You know, what could the NHL do? At, now we've got the 3 and 3 format that likely will change. What else would you like to see? Uh, well, I personally am not a great fan of the All-Star game. Um, and yeah, but that's what would you want to do to uh, change it? Get rid of it. But you know, it makes a ton of money. I know it, it'll be there all the time, and it's been there since the game started because they love to see players versus players. Like 100 years ago, it would have been players really trying because there weren't so many games and there wasn't so many people getting injured and stuff like that. Well, sort of. People getting hit in the face by flying box of rubber this big. Um, but I mean, I don't even think the play the players just aren't into it. I think that's what makes things fun. When people are into it, when things are going like, uh, we've played hockey games where if you're like not into it, everything feels slow. It feels like it's just dragging on. It's going like, oh yeah, like, like watching it. Like I used to watch the games just because, you know, I thought it'd be fun to see what the competition would be like. And it's like, wow, that was really boring. Yeah. If you're, if there's no people trying, then it's not going to be fun. Well, and like, then house league, the guys are trying their best, but it's. Have yeah, well, sometimes so. you get really good games. Like, people are really trying to get some good stuff. But well, we, we play in games where, uh, I remember you uh, getting a couple physical bouts. Oh, our tournament, Niagara Falls. Uh, yeah, it was great stuff. Didn't you get into two fights in one tournament? Uh, yeah, actually, uh, Zarius' dad was like, this, okay, so you need to kick the ref right in the leg. Because I want you to get kicked out of three games because I bet on it with Eric's dad. Well, like, I want to know, to the, to the viewers, does Brendan look like a guy who gets into a lot of hockey fights? 
apparently what three times now? Uh, in one what, season, one season I've gotten like five. Yeah, like, that was a fun season. But... That was great, but um, I mean, for the All Star game, I think the players just don't care. I think the season is so long, they travel so much, they're so tired that it's like when uh, a Sportsnet reporter, I won't name who, he's asked Braden Holtby, Braden, are you so excited? This is your first All Star game, and Braden Holtby, I lie, I do not lie, he was like. Yeah, I'm really glad that we go back to Washington on Monday. <laughs> I, I'm really glad. I can't wait to to have the second season. And yeah, because like, the players don't want to like be there. Like the thing was like John Scott was a guy who wanted to be there, but at the same time, then what do we have a? Can we just play the AHL All Star game and just like yes. there we go? Because those guys want to be there. They want to be in the NHL, but the AHL is really good for them. The NHL All Star guys like. Again, how many times have we seen Crosby in this game? Like None. I, I, actually, the last time once. he was there, I think, was 2009, because 2010 was the Olympics. 2011-12, he was injured. 2013 was a short season. 2014, he was in the Olympics. 2015, I think he was... They said he was injured, but he got ended up being suspended, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, and this year, they just didn't pick him. And I think that's fine with that. I think he's pretty well fine with that. But yeah, like, yeah, exactly. Like The thing is... I don't know what you do, honestly. Like, well, I don't like the skills competition. I really, oh, you know, I like the skills competition. I hate it. It's like they're trying to make basketball. It's like Gary's like, well, you know what? In basketball, we have the dunk okay, competition. Okay, but this year they weren't trying. Like, it was just like, all for fun. Like, guys like John Scott there. It it's looked so like, bad, though. but it looked like the whole atmosphere was totally different. It wasn't like some of these like guys in those games actually try. But now they were all just trying to make fun of each other. Like everyone trying to make fun of Yager, like Subban did, for example. But and, I just, I don't think the All Star Game. I think it's always going to be played. It's always going to be there. Uh, and when they used to play like Team Russia versus Team, like when the Russians like weren't as well known and they played in their own league and they mm -hmm. played against the NHL, that was fun. Or when Gordy Howe played with Gretzky, oh, like, that know, was fun. I liked when they had like the North America versus Team Europe. Yeah, that was because fun. Because yeah. guys were like, it wasn't for the country, but it was still like to see like who is the best. Because East versus West, it, that could change just based off of where guys put their contracts in. When okay. you put like, that's why I love international hockey. When okay. You, when you make it about the country, all of a sudden it's totally different. Now I saw. Uh, one person suggests the idea of having um, like a mid-season international tournament. As much as I love an international tournament, there's a reason the Olympics is kind of a problem, and I'm, let's not even talk about the World Cup. So uh, well, at the beginning of the season, which uh, is a better time. Personally. The Canada Cup. The Canada Cup. That's well, not called the Canada Cup, by the way. But it should be called the Canada. And it never will be. It is the Canada. Well, that's because Gary's in there. It's all because Team Canada and, is not organizing it. Well, anymore. it's because Gary Bettman hates Canada. He really does. If he if he didn't hate Canada, there would be more Canadian teams. But the problem is also he doesn't want to admit he's wrong because if he did that, he'd be like this. I am a short man who does not like saying he's wrong. But I mean, the All Star Game, I personally probably never watch it. I don't think it's that fun. The skills competition is like a mockery. They should wear their buttless pants. Um, basically, when they're doing their shootout drill, going up the stick, cross the line. Um, I personally don't think it's ever going to be fun for people like me, but yeah. All right, well, it's not. We're going to go to break, and we come back, we're going to talk about OJHL prospects Matt Cairns and Jack Jeffers. Welcome back to the Hockey House. And Brendan, this is always one of your favorite parts. It is. We need to talk about guys that are going to be drafted. What? This is better than the season. I literally think sometimes this is better than the season. It's, uh, you know, it, it, I guess in your case, yeah, it is. But uh, we're going to talk about two guys that uh, are we've seen a couple years now. Play. Local guys? Yep. Whoa. Yeah, both uh, around the GTA. Oh, my God. Yep, they both play uh, in the OJHL. Huh? And we're going to talk with a guy that yeah, uh, we both have seen many times. Okay. Jack Jeffers. I do like an Oakville guy, former Oakville Ranger, Brampton 45, actually had 32 points in 31 games, and was on the same team as Oakville Blade now. Cossack, same as Ben Blacker, same as Steve Martini, same as Mariani. Brady Sampson. Oh, Mariani. He's on a drink. Oh, yes. Almost. Uh, Michael Choma was on that team, so pretty good team. Tenth in Ontario. They didn't make the OHL Cup. Instead, Holton Hurricanes did, which actually have the Christ brothers, who one is in the OHL now with the Sagan Spirit. What do you like about him? I think he's good fast. He's good. He's good fast. He works well with the guys he works well with. I think he's not like a, a hit and miss guy. But you can really see between the guys he works well with and the guys he doesn't. The guys he doesn't work well, they'll still be playing. But the guys, when he finds those guys he really works well with, he can find the ice really well. He sees the he sees where to go really well. He can pass. He's fast. He's got some glass. I'm trying to make up rhyming words. But yeah, he's a good guy. He's six foot one, so he's a taller guy. He's a fast guy. He can find people. He can pass. But in the old JHL, there's a lot of these guys who aren't even on the on the radar, like. Kristen Rajic, 50 points in 35 games. Now, he has 52 points in 37, so the same as Rajic in points per game-wise. Yep, I know this guy that's one of his line mates, uh, Jeffers' line mates that you're a big fan of. I am. Look at Smilski. This guy's great. He has 52 points in 43 games. Wasn't actually drafted to the OHL at all. 
He averaged like a point a game on the Barry Jr. Colts as a 97 when it was his minor midget year. He's a great player. He's another shorter guy. But, yeah, he's been good for Orangeville for years. He averaged more than a point a game last year. Averaged more than a point in this game and 40 points in his rookie season. I know London invited him to their, uh, their rookie camp. But for London, they have so many good players. I think it's tough to find ice time. So I'm glad he came back to Orangeville. Uh, but, yeah, I, I was really excited when Jeffers got traded. And McLaughlin, who he got traded for, was a really good player as well. But I was really excited because Smilski's a good player. Jeffers can find, when he works well with people, he can, he's fast and can pass really well. Um, and then Jacome, too, is another guy who's a year younger than Jeffers, has 61 points in 47 games. Uh, he's also five foot eight, which I think that's that's what scouts are looking well, at. Okay, speaking of Jacob plays on Orn, on uh, sorry Georgetown. Yes, uh, one of his teammates is oh. actually a guy that is also ranked by the NHL right now in uh, Matt Karens, oh. who uh, got last year one of the Patriots. Um, and he did decide not to go to Peterborough. Uh, he's going to go play for Cornell University in the NCAA soon. So, congrats to Matt. And uh, very, very fun player to watch. Now, he wasn't overly standout. Like, he wasn't overly standout guy when he played for Team Canada East at oh. the under 17s. But also, that's not his play. He's not going to be a number one defenseman. He's a depth defenseman that will be very solid in his own zone. He won't uh, overcommit. And he's just a safe guy. Yeah, well, he has 29 points in 40 games, so he's, he's worked on his offensive game more. But I do like defense who commit to defense because I think the forwards do what they do, the defense do what they do. Offense is a smaller part for defense, but I think where he is right now, I think that's a good spot where he has to be in. Um, yeah, I'm, it's too bad he didn't go to Peterborough because I thought with their young core, with the guys they drafted this year with Clark, Glant, Grima, the guys they drafted last year with Ang, Tim, Lech, Wells, the guys they drafted the year before that with uh, Matt Spencer and even Cornell too, Cornell and Cornell. Uh, he'll probably, I don't know if Buffalo will sign him, but he'll probably be back next year. He's averaging more than a point a game. He was a former third overall pick too. Uh, but I think with that core, Peterborough has an okay team moving forward. Uh, so it's too bad he didn't get to uh, go to the OHL, but I think the minutes he got in Junior A, I think were really good. I think with uh, the Patriots, he got a long season. He got to play the whole season, plus playoffs, plus the Dudley Hewitt, and possibly, they didn't make it to the RBC, but they were, they were close to making it. Um, but yeah, I think he got the good ice time he needed, and I think it's really helped his development. And NCAA, I hope everything goes well with NCAA with him, but if it doesn't work out, I think he's got a good, yeah, good home in Peterborough. He definitely was looking for NCAA, because unfortunately, like a lot of players decide not to go to Peterborough, which... Um, Recently, Tyler Rollo did. Um, yeah, yeah, he did. He actually played like he played two games with Oakville, and then the day after, he played with Peterborough. Yep, and it, uh, Burlington native too, right? Yeah, yeah he so. is. Thirteenth um, round pick in two thousand thirteen by Barry. By Barry, yes. Yep. yep. And uh, otherwise, like, uh, do you have any? We got about a, about a minute left. What would you say about guys that you would like? maybe to see Squeak on the rankings. I, I love Jacome. I think he's, he's a really good player. I saw him play, I think, twice I saw him play. Well, we were there for the one time when they went 8-2, and they then did, he yeah. was on the score sheet every five seconds. Yeah, he was, he was played really good. I, I would like to see him. Radzik has been playing really well this year. Smilski as well. Uh, even uh, Kozak or Cossack, his brother plays for Moncton Wildcats with the great Connor Garland. Um, but yeah, any one of those guys, I think they have a lot of skill. And I don't like, I think that's what Georgetown does well. They don't base players on their size. I think they just take whoever the best player is. And if he's tall, fast, short, or whatever. And I really like to see Jacome on the list. I actually agree with that one. That's all we have for today. Don't forget to visit the Hockey Host Net for all the latest hockey news around the world. And make sure to follow the Hockey Host on Facebook and Twitter. I'm Stephen Ellis. And I'm Brady Sanders. Thanks for watching.